Hi, my name is JW and this is my path to OSCP. It's less than a week uh, till my labs end. They end in I think six or five or six days from now. Five days from now basically. I have five full days. Thankfully half of that is going to be the weekend starting in a few hours. So I will be doing long days for the next three days. It's just over a week till my exam. I'm still feeling pretty confident that I'm able to pull this off. Um, I'm starting to feel that I line up or am aligned to approximately to be average uh, average in the OSCP scale of people on the course. There are people who are definitely more uh, vested and more skillful than I am. That, that being said, they are more experienced than I am. But also I have seen and discussed with people who are less experienced, who need more time to learn. But that's the wonderful thing about OSCP so far is that you are able to increment or extend your lab time to suit your needs. And I know that if it were to happen that I don't pass next week, I freeze or I just lack the knowledge, then I would just take a small breather uh, because, as I have stated, I have uh, a pre-booked vacation that I had already booked before landing these labs. I have that coming up a few weeks from now. So I will take a breather and then come back and extend my labs at least one to two months more. Let's see. But I'm still aiming and going for for it as if there's no tomorrow, uh, I will pass next week's Friday, or rather the weekend, because basically my lab start, uh, sorry, my exam starts uh, Friday at 9 a.m. Uh, GMT. As you might know, it'll last for 24 hours. So at 9 a.m. on Saturday morning, my VPN connection will be uh, disconnected. I will no longer have any ability to take screenshots or try anything else. And that's it. After that, I have 24 hours until Sunday 9 a.m. to submit my exam report and they also recommend submitting the lab report. Because if I'm on the, on the fence and I'm lacking just a few points from passing a well-documented and well-done lab report might help me get over that hurdle. So, early, the week, basically early, not next week, but the week afterwards, so early April is when I'll know either, yes, I have passed, or no, I will need to extend my labs. But I'm still going for... Uh, basically passing the labs. It's been a few days since I did the last the last vlog, mainly because I've been just hauling ass and trying to hack every server I can. I've learned quite a quite a few new tools and new tactics I've employed. Uh, I learned for example uh, this shouldn't, yeah, this shouldn't uh, spoil anything because basically I learned of this technique, but it didn't work, so it didn't help me. But I learned that uh, using BITS, which is the Background Intelligent Transfers Service, uh, that was in the first introduced for the Windows updates, I think, you can actually use that as a sort of a command line wget for Windows. So basically tell bits 
that you want to run a transfer job and you can just give this URL and this local file. So you can download anything off of any, any computer basically. Another new thing, thing for me was learning about uh, VoIP servers, uh, voice over IP, like SIP is the protocol. And uh, there is one SIP server, at least. I don't know if there are multiple, I haven't found one, uh, only one, uh, on, on the lab network. And basically I had never touched, I had never spoken to, I had never prodded a SIP server before. So that was basically really new to me. Thankfully, I found a really nice Backtrack Linux wiki page on how SIP works, what are the, what's the infrastructure like, what's the protocol like, and here are some tools that will help you. Most of those tools that I found in that Backtrack Linux wiki page were not present in Kali Linux anymore, but I had enough tools to help me render that server mine. That being said, I currently have uh, 22 servers rooted. I have low privileged shell on one or two more. One of them being one of the three big ones. I have low privileged shell on pain. I was quite happy with myself when I actually got that low privilege shell. I haven't rooted it yet, uh, but I was really happy just to get the low privilege shell. Um, I have a few servers that I can basically enumerate until all of infinity. I can read any file on the disk almost, but I'm having difficulties being able to exploit them. I'm trying to find the uh, attack vector to basically get in based on the information I'm able to read. The obvious choices are like password files and configuration files and so forth. But so far, so forth, uh, so far, uh, my attempts have been futile. But I think for tonight, my first step is to again go over my recon what i actually know about these servers that i don't yet own and then just make a plan and stick to that earlier this week i was i had a really nice plan to attack three different servers after two hours attacking the first one i was able to root it and i was I was high on success and as I was so elated, so freaking happy, it messed up with my focus. I stopped following my plan. I was like, basically I was feeling like, yeah, I'm invincible or I can do anything. I'm the super elite mega cracker hacker. I'm not. I need to follow the procedure. I need to act professionally. Not like some script kitty high on Red Bull, even though I do drink Red Bull, but still. I need to act like a professional penetration tester, following a plan, going at it slowly and with purpose, instead of. Oh, that one. Nah. Oh, that one? No. How about this one? No. Because that doesn't work. I know one of the mental catches for me has been the fact that I know some of these servers you can't basically penetrate straight off the bat. You need, you need to have an angle. Either uh, they don't expose all of their services to the public network because there are several segments or you need to first penetrate some other server where you will get some information that will basically get you into this first server or it's a combination of both. 
So sometimes it's a little bit distracting because there's a little voice in my head saying, uh, it mustn't it, it, it isn't the fact that you don't know how to hack it. It's it must be that you need some additional information. Move on to the next server. And then the same thing happens again. And I've had that happen. And then when I go back and look at it, I'm like, I had all of the information. I had everything I needed. But I just didn't focus and enumerate enough. I still find that my post-exploitation game is really weak. That comes down to still the excitement of actually getting that server like, yes, it freaking finally worked, I'm able to get in. But then like fumbling around, where is the user add binary? What were the parameters for it? I've gotten a little bit better at it, but still, like, once I get root, the first thing I ask myself, okay, what now? I mean, obviously, I will look for the proof text and hopefully the network secret text, uh, but what then? What sort of stuff should I try to find on this server? And of course, that just comes with experience and seeing new things, seeing a lot of things, but I feel that that might be maybe the weakest weakest part of my penetration testing skills is post exploitation and I need to I need to work on that. Yeah, I think that's it. Uh I'll probably post the next vlog probably on probably after the last day or on the last day of the labs next I think it's Wednesday or Tuesday something like that um, and then I'll think of how I will do the vlogs for the exam because that obviously is quite an interesting vlog to have even for myself in the future uh, to see how I cope with that extreme time pressure of 24 hour uh, exam I've been thinking about doing like micro vlogs that I will then compile into one complete episode basically uh, one short like one minute two minute uh, bit right as the exam is about to start then one uh, set of thoughts from let's say three hours in or four hours in then one set from the midway point one set before sleeping one set after sleep and one set after uh, after the exam is over or something like that uh, something that I will give me a nice uh, broad view of that entire torturous and hopefully fun day thank you very much for watching thank you very much for all of your feedback and well wishes this has been very enjoyable and this has been by far the most arduous and most demanding both mentally and skill wise that I've ever done in my professional career. I wholeheartedly recommend OSCP training even though it's not finished yet for me but I, I already 5 out of 5 will recommend. Thanks.